All right, welcome everybody. Um, my name is Kevin Hesser and I teach here at Calaveras High School, teach agriculture. Um, and welcome to our series of career technical education presentations on um, career exploration. Um, today we'll be focusing on careers in medical fabrication, welding, um, product development, engineering design and electronics robotics, CNC machine tooling, um, and other agricultural careers across the board. Um, we have a, um, a guest with us today, Dean Danelle Hepworth from Delta College, who oversees the Applied Science, Business, and Technology Division, um, which has a multitude of different programs that she's gonna be talking about and sharing with you today. Um, so with that, I'll hand it over to Danelle. Um, we are broadcasting over to Bret Hart, so welcome, Bret Hart. If you have questions, um, there's going to be an app that you can use to um, use with your phone and send those questions over. We look forward to getting questions from you as well. Thanks. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so as he said, my name is Danelle Hepworth. I'm the Dean of Applied Science, Business, and Technology at San Joaquin Delta College. Um, so just so, because I want to kind of get an idea of, of who I have here in the room with us. How many people are seniors? Anybody a senior? Okay, I have a few seniors. Juniors? Okay, a lot of juniors. Sophomores? A lot of sophomores. Freshmen? All right, all right. So I got a, a wide variety of uh, people here. Okay, so how many of you know what it is that you want to do when you're all done with school? Not when you're done with high school, but when you're all done with all schooling. Yeah, okay, so a few people. How many people kind of, sort of, maybe kind of think what they want to do, yeah? Okay, how many people have no clue? Okay, that, that's good, that's good, right? So, so some of us have no clue what we want to do because there's, there's just so many options out there, so many things that you can do with your life. And I'm here today, I'm going to talk about a few things. Um, I'm going to talk about the, the main things that uh, were just described, but then, if we have time, I have more because I'm going to show you here. I'm the Dean of Applied Science, Business and Technology at Delta College. And if we look here, right, I got agriculture, I got architecture, I got automotive, whether you want to do auto body or automotive technology or even electric cars. Um, business, you want to own your own business, you want to go into finance, international finance, whatever. Also, all of that is still underneath my area. Oh, wait, I got to push the right button. There we go. Um, a computer network technician, so uh, Cisco Academy, you want to be an IT person, um, diesel, heavy equipment, Caterpillar, um, electron microscopy. Anybody know what electron microscopy is? Yeah, right? Oh, I got one, right? Kind of, yeah. So I got, I've got microscopes that are like um, about as big as this stage right here, and they take uh, objects and they uh, uh, make them like a million times their size. It's pretty cool. Um, electrical, um, electronics, which includes robotics and automation, um, engineering, engineering technology, fluid power, uh, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and refrigeration, uh, industrial law, so we have a brand new paralegal program, uh, machine tool technology, welding, and uh, sheet metal fabrication. So just that list alone just kind of tells you there's a lot of things going on in our division, and so we're not gonna talk about all of them, but we are going to kind of focus on a few things. I'm gonna actually, just because, can I take the microphone? Okay, I feel better. Because I, I can't, I, I spent um, many years as a teacher and it's really hard for me to just stand here at the podium. So I'm gonna move just a little bit. I'll try not to move too much. Um, so let's start out, let's talk a little bit about, okay. Okay, let's talk a little bit about our agriculture program. Um, how many people are thinking about doing agriculture? Anybody? Want to do ag any sort of agriculture? Kind of, maybe, sort of, a few, kind of. So we have um, a full agriculture program. Um, it includes um, some ag business. It includes ag mechanics, ag engineering, um, horticulture, plant science, 
um, any of those things that you can think of right there, some natural resources, um, animal science. So, but the question is what can you do, right? Uh, it's all good. It's always one of the questions, you know, you're always asked, what do you want to study? No, I don't want to know what you want to study. I want to know what you want to be and what you want to do when you're done studying. Because once you figure out what you want to do, then you can figure out what you want to study, right? So that's what we're going to kind of talk about is some of the things that you can do with uh, some of this education. So. Whoops, I missed one. Sorry, let's go back. Ag business, right? So ag business, you can go into any sort of business that's related to agriculture, whether that's business with um, relating to finance or management, or that's business related to sales and marketing, anything related to agriculture. And this is a huge area. There's a lot of people that do these types of jobs. And the typical salary, and when I talk about salary, I'm typically talking about people maybe after um, they finish school and about, I don't know, three years after they're done with school so that you got a little bit of experience, right? Because the first day on the job, you don't have any experience. So after you have a little bit of experience, but jobs can earn anywhere from 28,000 a year to 98,000 a year, right? A lot of variety there, depending upon which area in the ag business that you're interested in doing. So those are different types of things that you can do. You can also do animal science, right? So animal science, that's another huge one. Um, you can become uh, you know, an animal care worker, a uh, livestock buyer, animal scientist. You can become an animal nutrition sales, or you can do um, you know, quality assur assurance, pharmaceuticals that related to animals. Lots of things that you can do related to animal science. And uh, again, careers in animal science, anywhere from like 55,000 to 100,000 a year that you can do. So, and that's depending upon the type of schooling you have and uh, you know, whether you have an um, associate's degree or a bachelor's degree and the type of experience that you have. Um, also in agriculture, sorry, we have horticulture, plant science. So one of the things that we just recently started at Delta is um, our uh, PCA and, and CCA um, classes. And so those are pest, um, pest certification advisor. I'm, I'm not an agriculturist, sorry. And uh, crop certification advisor, pest control advisor, crop certification advisor. So those are things that you can do. You can also work for a nursery, greenhouse. You can uh, um, do all sorts of things. So at Delta College, we have a nursery. We have uh, two greenhouses. We also have a farm. It's a 160-acre farm where we do a lot of activities out there as well. Um, we have uh, out there, we have a brand new barn that is in the process of being built right now. And then we also have, uh, we have almonds and uh, wine grapes out there, but we're looking at putting in a whole bunch of other stuff out at the farm. Um, and then... Um, kind of along the same lines in our ag mechanics, right? We have ag mechanics and diesel. Um, so again, whether you want to be, be working on the, the um, machinery or uh, driving it or whatever, we have some sort of ag mechanics. But then kind of along with that is we're working on developing um, ag precision. So anybody ever flown a drone? Yeah, a few people, they're kind of cool, right? But how do you use drones in agriculture? How do you use GPS in agriculture? How do you use, you know, all the latest technology as far as, you know, um, you know soil, soil samples and, and uh, irrigation? How do you use all this great new technology in agriculture? So those are some of the things that we are working on. Um, any questions about agriculture? Any questions? You guys are quiet today. I like questions, so if you have questions. No? No questions? Okay. So let's see what I have next. Um, so some of the things that, uh, again, for if you're going to be working in diesel heavy, heavy equipment, right, salaries anywhere from 34000 to 74000 a year again, depending upon your experience and what you're doing. 
So um, I'm going to switch over to automotive, sorry. And so if we can go ahead and play that video. Okay, my name is Feng Sali Ram and my major is automotive technology. I chose it because I've loved working on cars. Well, my Delta Color experience, at first it was, I was just a lost and confused child. Every time I talk to my counselor saying that I want to become an uh, auto mechanic, they approve of it and it gives my hope up. There are guidance classes where if they're very undecisive of what they want to do, they can always go there because that's where I started off at. I never had to pay anything out of my pocket. Everything was financial aid. I'm trying to get as many certificates as I can in the automotive programs. It's been really great so far, now that I'm here. I'm happy and I don't ever want to give up anymore. Okay, anybody in here interested in automotive? Okay, so we have, um, we have four shops. Uh, we have an auto body shop that just deals with uh, restoration. We're in the process of restoring an old uh, uh, Dodge Challenger, so uh, the students get to work on that. Um, we also recently did a, um, a car that had been basically in an accident, and the car was, for the insurance purposes, was totaled. But we took that car and with um, um, cooperation with some of our industry partners, um, we refurbished that car, you know, fixed the outside, repainted it, did everything to it, and then um, turned around and donated it to somebody that was um, um, financially unable to purchase their own car. So we're able to do stuff like that. Um, but again, we have the, the automotive body repair and collision repair, um, complete shop. It has a, a paint booth, it has a, you know, a, a sand booth, everything that uh, you might need out in the real world and in industry, we have in that shop. We also have the automotive technology program. So automotive technology is anywhere from your basic lube maintenance and tire changing to dealing with electric vehicles. So we just purchased um, a Tesla that we use for part of our training. So uh, you get to practice on a Tesla. We also have, you know, great, uh, they're like, they're kind of cool. It's it's a it's a Honda. Uh, no, it's sorry, my bad. It's a Toyota. Sorry, <laughs> um, and you have the car, but it's kind of like only half there because there's training. Um, visual training aids inside the car. So it's really kind of cool. You get to see everything that's going on in the car. Because I don't know about you, but n nowadays a brand new car, you look, open up the hood and it's all just covered because everything is, uh, is computerized and everything. So we do have a whole bunch of uh, um, opportunities in our automotive program. Again, um, what can you do with that? We have a whole bunch of degrees and certificates that you can earn. You can earn um, AS degrees. You can also earn certificates. And then those that are um, coming out of our automotive program, I tell you what, the um, automotive um, dealers and um, industry partners, they are like snatching up our students left and right. They barely get a chance to finish the program before they have a job. So there's lots of opportunities for jobs in the automotive program. Um, and again, anywhere, depending upon what you're doing, if you're you know, doing basic lube maintenance at uh, Jiffy Lube, maybe maybe not making quite as much as if you're a, a senior maintenance person at a, at a dealership, but um, lots of opportunities. Any questions about Automotive. Oh, come on, guys, you gotta have a little bit of questions. All those people that raised their hand and said they wanna do automotive? Yes. So how long is the program? That's a really great question. Um, so if we look up here, um, you'll notice that there's you know several certificates. 
Um, so if I go to the basic repair and restoration, then you got intermediate and advanced. And down below, you have the, um, you know, the, the dealer technician, the lubrication technician, the master technicians. If you want to come in and in one semester you want to just earn a certificate, you can do that. But that will give you the lubrication certificate, which is only going to get you so many jobs, right? But if you want to stick around for um, a year, you can move up to the next level and you can get either like a mechanics technology or an electric or even the intermediate repair and restoration certificate. So after a year, you can get a different certificate. If you stick around for two years, right? So after two years, you can get the, the master technician, the advanced, and the dealer technician. Those are all higher level um, um, certificates and AS degrees. And you have more skills and you're more, um, more desirable to the employer by having more skills. So it depends upon how much time you want to spend. If you want to come in in one semester and uh, get that, that basic certificate and go out and get a job, you can do that. Or if you want to stick around for the whole two years and get the master level certificate or AS degree, that's an option too. Okay? Other questions? Okay. All right. I don't want you guys falling asleep here. All right. Let's see what else I got. Okay, let's go ahead and, so this, so before we start this video, so this video has several different programs listed in it. Um, it has engineering, um, electronics, uh, machining, and uh, um, the computer networking, um, Cisco Academy, and it also has speech pathology. Speech pathology is not in my division, but it's part of the whole video. So we're gonna watch the whole video here. I always like tinkering with uh, machines. I always like uh, learning how, how they work, uh, troubleshooting them, finding out the, the problems that they have whenever a, whenever a problem occurs. If you don't want to go to a university uh, and you really want to get a, a job really quick that pays really well, go to a technical career. You get out within two years and you already automatically start working and you get a, a pretty decent amount of pay. I've seen a lot of people uh, that go through the program that have engineering uh, degrees and I like the lifestyle they live. They, they're not uh, struggling to make ends meet. They really have everything pretty much set. One of the things that's really good at Delta is being able to have the equipment, not just you using the computer to simulate what's happening. We hook up, we communicate with each other, the system itself. Um, we set up IP VoIP phones and we are able to call each other. Having the equipment here is really, really important and that's exciting. This class, this course, is giving me more confidence to just tinker with it. And, you know, there's no undo button, but still. <laughs> I've been working at Simpson and Strontai for 10 years. My boss told me if you want to make more money, you need to go to school. Once you get into a program and we know that you can handle, then we could transfer you to another department, which is tool makers, so you can make more money. I'm happy because I'm going to be making more money. $17, I'll be making 30 something dollars an hour. When I graduated high school, I actually had no idea what I wanted to do. I had applied to several local universities. You know, when I got the acceptance letters, just nothing actually felt right. So I went through the list of programs here at Delta, and the one that really caught my attention was Speech Language Pathology Assistant Program. With a degree in Speech Language Pathology, there's options to work in the school setting if you want to work with kids and families and work the education side. This program here at Delta really prepared me well, and ultimately working in the clinical setting has really helped me with my personal skills and with my overall confidence working with people. The electronics program was something that I would always been interested in, and since the program was being 
revitalized. It was an opportunity for me to finally do something that I wanted to do as opposed to something that I had to do. There's a lot of companies that do repair and service for fields like medical professionals, medical hearing test equipment, gaming, you know, casinos. I mean, they, they need electronics technologists to, to maintain the slot machines. So there's a, there's a pretty wide range. Now I'm doing what I enjoy. I found my passion, and it's all because of making that decision to return to school. the Delta CTE program. Thanks to Delta College CTE program. Thanks to Delta College CTE program. I'm going to be an engineering technologist. I'm going to be a speech language pathologist. I'm going to be a network administrator. I'm now an electronics technologist at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. Okay, so in that video, we saw lots of different uh, uh, programs. You saw engineering technology. I don't know if you noticed, but in the video, this video is about uh, three years old, um, and you saw me in the background because I was actually teaching the class back then. So uh, that was before I became dean. I used to teach the engineering technology program. Um, so we talked about engineering technology. Anybody know what kind of an engineering technologist does? Any ideas? Any thoughts? Yeah, no, no clue, right? Anybody know what an in engineer does? Yeah, what does an engineer do? Design new parts for miscellaneous things? Absolutely, okay. So, uh, anything else engineers do? Anything? Yeah? Solve real life prob problems, exactly. Right? Uh, how many of you actually, you know, got up this morning and, and turned the faucet on and got, got water, right? Yeah, yeah, you did that. How many flushed the toilet? And hopefully they weren't the same water, right? Yeah, we don't want that, right? So that's an engineer that designed that, right? An engineer that designed the, the sewer portion and an engineer that designed the, uh, the water that you're kidding that you get to drink. So um, if, um, if, if you're an engineer, um, you need people to help you, and that's what the technologist does. So a lot of technologists, engineer technologists, they will, they will have the opportunity, so the engineer may have this idea in their head, and they'll kind of do some of the calculus behind it, but the technologist is the one that's going to do the hands-on stuff. They're going to do the experiments. They're going to do the actual drafting. They're going to do the actual um, um, basic design of objects. So they help the engineer by doing all of the hands-on stuff. Um, we have lots of uh, engineering technologists that go on and work for a lot of different companies, whether it's someplace like, uh, and it's in all sorts of fields, right? So we have surveying, where they go out and measure the land. Um, we have people that work for, like you said, Lawrence Livermore Lab, where they do research, or um, places like uh, OG Packing that does agriculture, that does um, um, cherry packing and blueberry packing and stuff like that. So engineering technologists kind of work all over the place. Um, and we have kind of two certificates and two degrees in engineering technology. You can come in and in two semesters you can get a certificate and in computer-aided drafting. Right? So if you just want to focus on just the drafting portion, you can do that, and in two semesters you can have that certificate. If you want to stick around for two more semesters, um, you can have a certificate in engineering technology. So that gives you more, um, more of the experimental stuff. Right. So we do some, uh, um, in the bottom right corner there, uh, we do more breaking of things. Right. Because I don't know about you, but when I'm driving over a bridge, I don't want it to break. So engineers get to break things 
to see what it takes to break them so that they don't break when you're actually using them. So that's kind of one of the fun things that you get to do. Um, so that's engineering technology. Uh, we have, um, again, salaries ranging anywhere from 49000 to 81000 a year for some of our engineering technologists that uh, um, finish with their certificates. Again, depending upon where you're at and the experience that you have. Um, part of also what we talked about was the electronics. You saw the gentleman that at the end there that was working for Lawrence Livermore Lab. You saw the, the robots, um, robot arms. We have all of those at Delta College. So everything you saw on the video are our actual labs, right? So they are really in our classrooms. Those were not um, videos that we took someplace else and put our students in, but those are our real students and our real labs. Um, so electronics. Lots of different areas of electronics, um, not just quote unquote electronics, but you have uh, uh, Cisco Network Academy, which includes essentially if you want to be an IT person, right? If you want to know about the internet of things, right? How many people um, have smartphones? Anybody? Yeah? Okay. So every time you send a text, how, how does that happen? It's magic, right? It's magic. Well, it's got to happen through all of this networking. So somebody's got to do that. Got to find all those IP addresses, right? Um, anybody have like a, um, a vehicle that's got like a smart, right? It, that has a computer attached to it, right? We got lots of those out there, yeah. Absolutely. Anybody have a refrigerator that's got like uh, smart stuff attached to it? I don't have one of those yet, but right, those are out there. So everything has is attached to the internet. How many ha have like a, you know, uh, what is it, a Google or an Alexis or something like that that they talk to? Yeah. So all of that um, is all about the internet of things. Everything we do today has something related to the internet. You can't hide from it. No matter, no matter how much you want to try, you can't hide from it. It's all there. So we need people. This is one of probably one of the biggest upcoming jobs between the, the networking as well as the security behind the networking, right? Because I don't know about you, but I don't want my identity stolen because uh, somebody got into my internet somewhere. Right, so this is a, a big potential for um, uh, jobs in the future. Um, and again, you'll see here potential salary between $65,000 and $124,000 a year, right? People that are in IT are gonna make quite a bit of money, right? And, and it, everywhere, right? Do you have IT here on your campus? I bet you do. You have computers on your campus, then you have IT on your campus, right? Anywhere there's a computer, there's gonna be IT people, so they're everywhere, okay? So whether or not you wanna work for um, a school district or a, uh, a big business where they're worried about uh, their, the protection of their um, property on the internet, or if you wanna work directly with um, um, the networking behind the scenes, it's all there. Okay, so that's one aspect of electronics. Um, other aspects is basically, you know, what, what's the difference between electrical and electronics? You know the difference? What's the difference between electrical and electronics? Yeah, what do you think? It's kind of, yeah, so electrical is like the wires and stuff, and electronics is like the internet, okay? All right, that's, that's pretty close. Any other thoughts on what's the difference between electrical and electronics? Okay, yes? Okay, so electrical is, again, wires and electronics is like circuit boards, exactly. So, so kind of a combination of the both of those. So electrical, again, wires, electricity, right? How do you get electricity to your, you know, to your building, to your um, 
to your, your device, how do you get electricity? You know, power, how do you get power? Is it coming from solar? Is it coming from turbines? How are we getting electricity? And, but then electric, electronics is stuff, right? Stuff. How do we use that electricity to do something? Do you, uh, you know, do, I, ha I have a computer somewhere back there that has uh, um, my PowerPoint on it. I have a projector. Those are all electronics. You have phones. Those are all electronics. So anything that is like stuff that you use that has to use electricity, those are electronics. Okay, so kind of the difference. So, um, so when we talk about electronics, right, all sorts of things that you can do, anything, right? You wanna work with smartphones? You wanna work with uh, um, machinery? Do you wanna work with anything that has power coming to it that requires some sort of like circuit boards or anything like that. So we have all sorts of electronics opportunities. And then along with that is the automation and robotics, right? So where do you see the use of automation and robotics? Where, where might you see that? Where's that? Tesla, okay. I heard another one back there somewhere. In factories, okay. So automation of factories, absolutely. You got a lot of, uh, um, a lot of times moving things along the survey. Um, yeah, along belts to uh, get them from one place to another. Um, what else might we use? Automation, robotics. Yeah. Medical fields, absolutely, right? Medical field is becoming very much um, automation, robotics. Anything else? Anybody ever been to a theme park? Yeah, you ever ridden on a roller coaster? Been to a fair, ridden on one of their roller coasters, right? They, it's all automated now. The, the person that's standing up there you know, welcoming you and saying, keep your hands and feet inside the car at all times. They're not doing anything but pushing a button, right? That's all automated. So somebody has to know how to fix it if it breaks down. That's all automation robotics, right? So lots of opportunities. Um, again, we talked about agriculture, automation robotics in agriculture, whether or not you're gonna use drones or um, automated, uh, um, Irrigation sensing, all that's automation. So uh, pretty much this is a huge technology. You can think, you can say, okay, I'm gonna go into automation and robotics or electronics, but then the world is still out there because you could do it in so many different ways, whether it's in medical or agriculture or in, in automotive or in you know, industry, however you wanted to use that automation robotics. Okay, and again, I think it was on my previous slide. So salaries, uh, electronics, uh, anywhere from 47 to 68,000. Uh, automation robotics, kind of new, so I didn't have any uh, um, updated salary information, but probably just slightly more than the electronics are right around that same area. Um, I think, um, so the other thing that was on that uh, video was the machine tool technology. Um, how many people are interested in some sort of machine tool technology? Anybody? Got one? Okay, maybe two? Okay. So um, you saw in the video our machine shop. We just renovated it. Um, and I will tell you that this is another one of those areas where most people are not aware that this is a, a, very, uh, a very good job that you can do. Right, so whether that's uh, computerized, so the, we have the certificate, oh sorry, it's on the next slide. Let me put up the next slide. A certificate in the um, CNC or computer numerical control, that is one of the areas that you can get a certificate. You can also um, just get a machinist entry level or an AS degree. Um, so as we talk about these programs, most all of them have a certificate and an AS degree that you can earn. So most certificates can take anywhere from one semester, um, one year, 
or maybe 18 months, and then um, adding in general education, like the history and the English and stuff like that, then, then you can get the AS degree. So most certificates only require the actual skill set. So if I'm going into automotive and I'm getting a certificate in automotive, pretty much the only classes I'm going to be taking are automotive or automotive related classes. Right? So I don't, I don't have to think about whether or not I, I'm going to take that English class or that history class. However, if you want that AS degree, um, then you have to take the general education courses. Um, any ideas? What would be the difference? Why would you want, you know, so you can get a certificate or you can get an AS degree. Why would you care, right? If, if all you want is your skill set in that area, right, you can get a certificate. You can go get a job with a certificate. Why would you even consider doing an AS degree? Any ideas? I'm, a, I, I'm kind of agreeing with you. Why would I, right? I don't like English. I've never liked English. But, right, I would have to take English class in order to get that AS degree. Or I'd have to take that, that um, I don't know, what else, history class. History is kind of interesting. I just don't like writing papers. So, you know, that's why I was an engineer. I don't like writing papers. Then I found out as an engineer, I had to write a lot of papers. So, why would you consider doing an AS degree? Any thoughts? Yes. It does. It does look good on a resume. Absolutely. Right? And maybe, maybe right now, all you want is that, that job, right? But maybe five years from now, you want to get a promotion, right? And so five years from now, you're, you're like, I've got all the skill sets, but I want to get that promotion. And they're like, well, you know, you, you don't really have, you know, an AS degree or anything. And so you're like, yeah, I do. I got this AS degree. So one of the good things about the, the coming to Delta College is that you can come and you can do that certificate. You can go out and get that job. And then maybe you decide um, in a year or so you're going to come back and do some of your general education and still come back and get that AS degree. So it's always open to you. It's never closed, right? And I know that, like, even for me, when I went to school, you know, I started out taking a few classes, and then I came back later and finished things up later because I needed more education. So everything um, kind of builds upon itself. Right? You start out with that, that, uh, that basic certificate, go out, get a job, maybe uh, um, learn a little bit of income, and then you can come back, get the next level, and then maybe you come back and get an AS degree. And then maybe eventually you decide that you want to transfer and you want to go for that bachelor's degree. It's all there and it's all available. Um, any questions so far? I feel like I've been up here talking too much. That is not the way I like to have class. Okay. So the, so, um, the last main one I want to talk about was the welding and uh, sheet metal fabrication. Um, again, we just refurbished our, our welding shop. And so we've got um, all brand new stuff. We just purchased um, a welding robot. I haven't got to actually play with it yet. Actually, I don't ever get to play with anything in welding because I don't know how to weld, but I'm going to take that class so that I can learn. But uh, we have a great program. Um, classes, we offer classes in the daytime, in the afternoon, in the evening. So depending upon, again, if you have, um, if you want to work and then go to class in the evening, or if you have, you know, you work in the evening, go to class in the daytime, all of that's available. Um, and um, we work really closely with the American Welding Society. And so you can also get your, um, your certificates for the American Welding Society through our programs as well. We have um, several certificates um, in each specialized area. So whether or not you wanted a certificate in the uh, gas metal arc welding, or the gas tungsten, or the oxy fuel process and shielded metal arc welding. 
um, you could get a certificate in any of those specialized areas. Because I know that depending upon where you're gonna go to work, they focus on different areas. Again, I don't weld, so I don't know what those areas are, but there's um, lots of areas. So where would you work as a welder? Any ideas? Yeah. You, you wanna work in welding? Awesome. You know, I will say that uh, we don't get a lot of female students in our welding program, but often though the female students that are in our welding program are at the top because they, um, they want to be there, right? So anybody else? Any ideas on where you would work in welding, how you would work? All right, yeah. Absolutely, automotive fabrication shops. Any other ideas where you would work in welding? Yeah. What was that? Pipe welding, exactly. One more time. Private contractors, absolutely. Yes. Anywhere else? Okay. So, um, again, our, our welding students, this is right now a very high demand job. Um, and so most of them, we have to uh, basically remind them that they really need to stay and finish their certificates because they get job offers before they finish. Because there's, so, there's a, enough work right now that they are just really, um, in, industry partners are saying, we, we need your students. And I'm like, no, 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 don't take them yet. Let them finish. Let them finish. So, and that's one of the good things too about having the, the smaller certificates that are just the individual areas. That way you can come in and get that certificate quickly and go out and get that job. Okay. Um, any questions? No questions? Okay. So, um, Hmm. So, as you think about what you want to do, right, I, I've got lots of flyers up here, right, for all my different areas that I oversee, but um, realize, realize that many of these programs often overlap with one another. If I want to study, you know, like we said, if I want to study um, agriculture, well, in agriculture is also diesel heavy um, equipment. It's also automation and robotics. It's also business. It's also, um, right, a little bit of engineering technology. It's a little bit of, uh, you know, all sorts of things that can be included in this. So think about that as you're thinking about different things that you can do. Um, Questions for me? Questions about any of the programs that we've kind of talked about? No questions? I know, it is the very last class of the day and you're ready to go home, I get you. So again, engineering, so engineering or engineering technology? Both, okay. So engineering, uh, I'll start with the engineering technology. So engineering technology is, if you want an AS degree, it's gonna be two years, right? And so again, if you wanna just get the certificate, you can do that in, um, well, you can kinda do that in two years. Of pro because there's enough classes, you need to do that in two years, and then you can also do your general education and get your AS degree at the same time. Um, if you want to do engineering, engineering requires a four-year degree from a four-year university. You can come to Delta College and you can complete the first two years at Delta College and then transfer to um, a four-year university that offers engineering. So again, when you come to Delta College, you would take classes like um, calculus and calculus and calculus and one more calculus, and a physics, and another physics, and you would take chemistry, and then you would take some engineering classes as well. Um, and that would be your two years before you transfer to a four-year school. Um, so let me ask you a question. How many of you know, how much does it cost to attend like a, um, a CSU? 
Anybody know what it costs to attend a CSU? Yeah. 100,000? Okay, let me, let me rephrase that question. How much per year is tuition? Right, so not books, not uh, room and board, but just tuition for a CSU. Any, any ideas how much it is? I'm probably a little bit outdated, but it's probably about 8,000 a year for a CSU. Okay, about $8,000 a year, and that's just tuition. That does not include your books, that does not include your room and board if you're living there. Okay, how much does it cost to attend um, a UC? Any ideas? No ideas? What do you think? Yeah. Right, exactly, right around eighteen to $20,000 a year for a UC. Okay, and again, that's tuition, that is not books, that's not room and board, that's just, just tuition. Okay, how about, how about a private school? So like National University is a private school, University of Pacific is a private school, um, some, uh, what are some other private schools, right? St. Mary's is a private school. There's a lot of private schools. How much does it cost to attend a private university? Any ideas? Yeah. How much? 50,000, right? Anywhere from a, probably about 30,000 to about 80 to $100,000 a year to go to school there, okay? So now that we know how much everybody else costs, how much does it cost to attend Delta College? Any guesses there? Yeah, what do you think? It, it is, it is almost like free, right? It is almost like free. So if you are a brand new high school graduate and you attend full time, it is free for two years. Okay, so if you're a brand new high school graduate and you attend full time, it's free for two years. Again, that does not count your books. Okay, that's separate, but your tuition is free. If you're not, you know, if you decide to take a couple years off and go work or go do something, right? Do your, what's that called now? Um, your, uh, I don't even know what it's called, never mind. I'll think about it in a second. Um, and you come back to Delta and you're no longer that brand new out of high school students, it's still approximately $1,000 per year to go full time, okay? So now, you can go to Delta College for two years and you can go out and get a job. You can come to Delta College for two years and you can transfer to a four-year university, okay? We have many of our students that come to Delta College and then they transfer to um, Sac State, Stan State, UC Davis, UC Berkeley, UCLA, uh, wherever they want to go but they finished their two years at Delta College first. Now, if I came to Delta College and um, I did my first two years at Delta College and say I transferred to UC Davis and I get a bachelor's degree at UC Davis in, I don't know, well, I'm an engineer, so I'm gonna get a bachelor's degree in engineering, okay? Does my diploma from UC Davis say I earned a bachelor's degree at UC Davis but I went to a community college first? No. Nope. It does not. It just says I earned a bachelor's degree from UC Davis. It doesn't say anything about the fact that I went to a community college first, right? That's a big deal, because nobody cares that you went to the community college first. And I will tell you, um, so uh, another question. So if I were to go to UC Davis, and I needed to take an, uh, the intro to chemistry class, right? Everybody has to take an intro to chemistry class. How many students are going to be in that class? Any guesses? 100, right? Right? It's going to be 100, 200, maybe 500. There's going to be a lot of people in that chemistry class. Okay? Do you think that teacher knows you? Does the teacher really care? Probably a little bit because they really want all of their students to succeed, but they don't know you. Come to Delta College, how many students are in my chemistry class? More like 30, right? 30, it's a big deal. Because does that teacher then know you? Well, only if you go to class, right? If you skip class, they won't know you. But if you go to class, that teacher will know you. That teacher will see when you're struggling and be able to help you, 
Those are other benefits of coming to Delta College. Okay. Questions about attending Delta College? No questions? You guys are just wanting to like go home, I can tell. So um, then I'm just gonna quickly, so we talked about, I have a lot of things in my division, architectural drafting, if you wanna become an arch architect, um, a drafter for an architectural firm, or if you want to uh, go on to that four-year school and become an architect, we do have that. Um, business, we have a lot of business programs, right? I'm gonna go ahead and, um, let's go ahead and play this video. So my name's Kabir, I'm 17 years old. Basically, I have this skateboard company where I recycle old and broken used skateboards and I turn them into something else and give them a second life. You know, I'm a really big uh, eco-friendly guy. I, I like to give these a better purpose. My name is Nevin Francis. Today, I have like many variations of soaps right here. I have um, some savon de saint Joaquin. More started out as a hobby, pretty much, let's just say. And I just wanted to like experiment like, okay, how do I make my own soap? So my name is Lizette Delgado and this is my art business. I'm a freelance artist. I sell watercolor, acrylic, and oil. People would always ask me, why are you giving them away? You should make a business out of this. And I'm like, you know what? It's one thing I love to do. I'm passionate about it and I might as well make a business out of it. My name's Sal, and I go by Sal the Sneakerhead on YouTube and Instagram. Basically what I do is I deconstruct, customize, or uh, restore shoes for people. A little base is like, this is not made at all by any factory, this is made by myself. I basically go around and make people's shoes from all over the world. I think my first client was like Florida, and uh, I make them wearable again. And then now it's my full-time business while I go to school. Um, I was laying on the couch and watching my daughter, and she had a little teething ring that I slipped over the bottle and slid it down to the bottom, and sure enough, it acted as a balance to the bottom. And that's how the, the idea originated. We have uh, two different functions. We have the stabilization and then we have the uh, suction here. So you can flip it upside down and it'll pick up. I love that Delta is, you know, opening the door for schooling at entrepreneurs. Okay, how many people want to own their own business someday? Yeah? Have you got ideas of what you want to do for your business? A couple ideas? Awesome. Okay. Anybody else have ideas for what they want to do for their own business? So that video was actually really kind of interesting. Um, we have a business entrepreneurial program where you learn about how to run your own business, right? And so those students set up a what they called a pop-up market where they we had pop-up tents all all across the quad and people that had their students that had their own business just set up tables and they were able to uh, sell their products that particular day and it was kind of fun because there were some really as you saw there were some interesting different ideas out there for business ideas and um, it was a great opportunity to see what you could do if you wanted to own your own business. So having your own business is also something that we really try to promote at Delta College. I don't wanna take up all our time here, but okay. So business, right? So business, um, retail, um, if you wanted to do entrepreneurial, if you wanna do international business, you wanna become a municipal clerk, you want to do um, supervision, management, anything like that related to business, you can do that. And you, we have lots of opportunities at Delta. And again, salaries depends upon what you're doing in business, right? So um, accounting, anybody want to do accounting? Anybody? No? You want to do taxes? You want to do taxes? Yeah, I don't, want, I don't like doing taxes either, right? That's not fun, but people who like to do, like to play with numbers, accounting is a really good thing to do, um, and really, truly, it can be very uh, uh, rewarding financially. You can do uh, tax preparation, bookkeeping. Um, what about, so business information management. Um, anybody want to work in an office, like doing uh, um, 
used to be called secretarial work, but it's administrative assistant. You help everything. Anybody want to do something like that? Okay, so those are other options that you could do at Delta. Um, what's logistics and transportation? What is that? So for those of you that said they you want to own your own business, if you have a product, how do you get it? Yeah, it's got to get shipped out somewhere, somehow. Yeah? Well, how's it getting there? Right, right now, everything's going through Amazon. Right? I mean, Amazon has really, truly taken just that logistics portion and transportation of products to a whole new level. Right? Maybe, maybe you're going to be the next person to come up with an idea on how to best deliver products from where they're manufactured to the people that actually use them. Right? A lot of options, a lot of opportunities. And this is actually, again, another one of those big areas that most people don't think about, but it's a huge uh, market right now. If you want a job, logistics is going to be a big, huge one for the future. Um, real estate, anybody want to sell real estate? No? Okay. Um, electrical, so we talked about electric electronics was the things that take electricity and electrical is the wires. Right, we have um, a lot of electrical um, position, a lot of electrical positions. That's a big, huge pro a big, huge market as well. Need for electrical people. I don't know about you, but uh, you know, I like to be able to have my lights come on when I turn on my lights in the morning. Okay, okay. Another video here. This one's kind of a fun video. This is electron microscopy. This is the crazy one I told you about, where I have. Um, Microscopes, kind of as big as uh, um, the stage, right? So, and what you can see with this is pretty amazing. So we'll go ahead and play this video now. These are images taken from an electron microscope. Conventional light microscopes allow magnifications of up to a thousand times. Electron microscopes, however, allow us to view objects up to several million times their actual size. You know, when I was four years old, I looked at some boogers under a microscope, and I was sold from then. There's, there's stuff that in this world that we can't see unless we have these special tools to look at them. There's worlds within our world. Electron microscopy is an integral part of modern manufacturing and biological research. Without these tools, the development of modern technologies would not be possible. Everything from cars to bridges to computer chips require the use of electron microscopes as they are designed, tested, and built. Electron microscopes are also used to study diseases, which leads to creating cures. Imagine if a piece of equipment or material breaks or fails in some way. An electron microscope helps us view exactly what caused the failure. Properly diagnosing the problem can mean the difference between a strong, lasting bridge and a dangerous hazard. Delta College is the only community college in the U.S. to provide expert training in the field of electron microscopy. Students are given the opportunity to work with some of the most advanced technology of any scientific field in the country. Those who enter Delta's electron microscopy program will receive skills that are in high demand all around the U.S. Recruiters regularly hire students upon graduation. Some students are hired even before they complete the program. It's not like oh, I'm going to apply around, hope someone picks me. There's companies that are posting, we want your best people. So I saw that board, all these jobs. I want to be one of the best people because I want to start making money. You can see the direct result of hard work in the program. People are getting picked out left and right for, for opportunities. Electron microscopy graduates with entry-level positions in the biotech industry 
earn a median income of $47,000 per year. Wages across the biotech industry are expected to grow by 10% over the next five years. Delta College was one of 65 colleges um, that was recognized by the Chancellor's Office through the Strong Workforce STARS program. 50% or more are at least earning higher wages than before they started. 70% or more of the students have attained a living wage. And 90% or more of our students are working in a relevant field of study. So it's just a whole new realm. You know, a lot of kids look up into the stars and say, wow, space is amazing. It's like astrophysics or astronomy. It's, it's a whole other universe out there. But then you have the same universe within, within a little speck of a booger when I was four, four years old. <laughs> So what did he say he looked at when he was four years old under a microscope? A booger, ew. <laughs> so, so like I said, um, Delta College is the only community college that has an electron microscopy program in the entire United States. And so again, if anybody in the United States is looking for somebody to uh, work for them in electron microscopy, they're going to be coming to Delta because it's the only place that trains them. So if, you're, if you like science, but maybe you don't want to have to uh, take all the calculus and the you know, whole bunch of classes and you just want to do some hands-on stuff, it's a great opportunity. So, um, and again, I recently had a student that finished at Delta College about three years ago, went to work, has about three years of experience, and just turned down a job offer for 125000 a year because the other offer he got was better. So, it's a good job, right? So, electron microscopy. HVAC, again, I like to have uh, my air conditioner working, right? It's a big field here. Industrial technology. So, we talked a little bit about if you wanted to do machine shop, or if you wanted to do welding, or if you wanted to do uh, electrical, or if you want to do HVAC. But what if you want to do everything? All right, I want to do a little bit of everything. Sounds really cool. I, I want to go learn about a little bit of welding. I want to go learn about a little bit of electrical. I want to, right? A little bit of automation. Well, that's what your industrial technology or industrial maintenance person, right? Because most employers right now, they want you to know a little bit about everything, right? They want somebody that's going to do some troubleshooting. So they can do some, a little bit of everything. So this is a great opportunity as well. I think this is. Okay. Oh. Sorry, I had one more. Paralegal. So if you wanted to work, maybe you want to work in a law office, and you want to work as a paralegal, this is a great opportunity as well. Um, apprenticeship. Anybody ever heard of apprenticeship? You know what that is? Yeah? Do you know what apprenticeship is? Okay, so you go work for somebody that's um, at a higher position in a field that you like and, and study with them. Absolutely. So basically, apprenticeship is you get hired, and then they do on-the-job training at the same time they send you to school. Right? So we have several different programs. If you're interested in an apprenticeship program, um, you have to be hired by the company, but we have lots of companies. Uh, Caterpillar, um, the electrical, we got, we've got uh, Department of Water Resources, lots of different companies. So I think... That is all I have. I have any questions. Anybody have questions for me? Questions about Delta College? Questions about programs? Anything? Yes? So again, just like all the others, the diesel program is very similar. If you want to come in and get the basic diesel certificate, that's going to take you a year. If you want the advanced level certificate, it's going to take you two years. Okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to skip over diesel. And we have an amazing diesel shop. Like, it's huge, and we got all these big, huge engines in there. It's kind of pretty cool. Any other questions? Nobody? You sure? I got, I got lots of answers for you. 
All right, so I'm gonna put this up here. This is my name, my contact information. If you ever have questions about San Joaquin Delta College and what, we can, what you can do there, you're always welcome to contact me. I also have flyers up here for everything that we talked about today. So if you're interested in any of the areas that we talked about, there's lots of flyers up here. You're welcome to come and, uh, and pick up a flyer on your way out. Um, and I'm also, I'll stand around and wait for a little while longer if anybody has any specific questions that you want to talk to me about.